everyone, I'm Chris Hernandez, and this is the Weekly Report, a look at news from the city of Kansas City, Missouri. Morelia, Mexico, a sister city for the city of Kansas City, just donated 60 Spanish language books to the Kansas City Public Library. Alfonso Navarro was also introduced as the new head consul for the Consulate of Mexico in Kansas City. Kansas City has 13 other sister cities. The sister cities program supports trade, healthcare advancement, and using new technologies. The city of Morelia has a lot of fountains just like Kansas City and has helped Kansas City police officers learn Spanish. Demolition of the Royale Inn located at 6th and Paseo will soon start. But first, the city allowed staff from the Independence Avenue Community Improvement District to dig up rose bushes that border the blighted property. The rose bushes will be transplanted to another section of Independence Avenue. These are heritage roses. We've got beautiful, both pink, red, yellow roses. And heritage roses that have been here, these roses have been here, I know, 25 years. And they have history with them. And we want to take and beautify another space and place. A busy summer is wrapping up, so let's check in with several other city departments. This team in blue is out to help thousands of KC Water customers save money on plumbing repairs they may not even know they need. They are part of KC Water's new program called Keep Out the Rain KC. It's a $250 million program designed to keep rainwater out of our public sanitary sewer system. Keep Out the Rain KC is a voluntary program to help property owners fix improper plumbing connections that can contribute to the overflow of diluted sewage into the environment and sewage backups in homes and businesses. KC Water pays for the repairs, not the homeowner, and it's available to specific neighborhoods. And we chose those areas with the highest flow, or the wettest areas, another way to say it, as our project areas in order to reduce that amount of rainfall that enters the system. After a property owner agrees to an evaluation, a licensed and professional design team will evaluate the home to determine what, if any, repairs are needed. Typically it'll be uh, less than 15 minutes. We'll want to come inside. If you have a basement, we'll want to check there. It's usually where we'll find some connections that may be of, of interest, like a sump pump. Uh, check that out and then outside walk around the exterior, check out uh, downspout connections and usually pretty quick in and out. Sherry Onweiler of South Kansas City signed up. I called them and they were here same day and when they came out we went they were very nice very prompt we ran down the stairs looked at my sump pump to see where it looked like it was draining to see what it looked like um, looked at the pipes in the basement and to see where stuff is draining it all took maybe 15 minutes and they were just super nice super easy knew what they were doing. If repairs are needed, the work will be done by plumbers who are pre-qualified and licensed to do business in Kansas City. KC Water will pay for the cost of the evaluations and for a limited time any qualifying repairs. To see if your property qualifies and to schedule an evaluation, go to kcwaterservices.org slash rain or call 816-513-0200. Evening and Saturday appointments are available. I would think everybody should do it and see what they find out. Maybe they have an issue in their own home that they don't even know about, and this is a good way to find it out without it being a charge to you. Hi, I'm Janet O'Hagan with Kansas City Convention and Entertainment Facilities, bringing you news of upcoming shows and events taking place at your city facilities. Bring the whole family and enjoy the 31st annual Fiesta Hispania at Barney Alice Plaza on September 16th through September 18th. This is a three-day free weekend event where you'll be able to get a taste of Hispanic foods and traditions from various parts of Latin America. Come and watch traditional dances and local performers on the main stage and stay to dance the night away with international award-winning Latin artists that will be performing each night. The first annual Veterans Career and Resource Fair will take place on September 21st at Bartle Hall. This full day event provides an opportunity for our veterans 
to access valuable resources that can propel them toward their career and educational goals. The general public is encouraged to take part in this event, and if you have an immediate job opportunity or just wish to support veterans in general, fair sponsorships and booth spaces at the event are still available. For more information, go to kcmo.gov slash veterans fair. Sadie Robertson, reality TV star on Duck Dynasty and Dancing with the Stars, headlines the live original tour 2016 coming to the music hall on September 24th. Sadie and her squad will bring with them motivational messages along with live music performed by Family Force 5, Love the Outcome, and more. For more information, go to liveoriginal.com. Bring the whole family to the American Royals' most exciting event on September 23rd and September 24th at Hale Arena. It's Kansas City's only PRCA rodeo and the most action-packed show of the America Royal season. For tickets, go to Ticketmaster.com or the Municipal Auditorium box office. To learn more about events taking place at Kansas City's convention and entertainment facilities, visit kcconvention.com and click on the events calendar or call 816-513-5000. Construction crews are raising the roof on the new North Patrol Division of the Kansas City, Missouri Police Department. A topping off ceremony was held with dignitaries and other members of KCPD who signed the beam that will be permanently placed on top of the station. In building construction, topping out is a builder's ritual traditionally held when the last beam is placed atop a structure. The new station will replace the current one at 1001 Northwest Berry Road. Mayor Sly James. And this project is one of the things that I think signifies the tremendous growth uh, of population in the Northland and the commitment that we have to keeping public safety paramount in the Northland. Uh, Kansas City has been recognized for some outstanding community policing ideas. Uh, some of the things that Chief Forte brought to four are really paying off and thank you for that Chief. Uh, without your leadership, uh, we wouldn't be in this type of shape. And under his leadership, we've demonstrated time and time again uh, that the police officers in this force care about the residents and the community. They're committed to building relationships with the people in the community. They're committed to building trust, and working cooperatively and collaboratively with the folks in the community. Uh, the chief and I are also very much committed to continuing to work very closely uh, to meet the needs of residents in this and every other community in this city. At the end of the day, we're all one city. The new North Patrol Division is the final project funded by the public safety sales tax, which voters in Kansas City approved in 2002 and again in 2010. North Patrol serves an 85 square mile area and is geographically the largest patrol division in Kansas City. Police Chief Daryl Forte. I want to thank the, the taxpayers. You know, without the taxpayers passing the public safety sales tax fund, this wouldn't be possible. This wouldn't be possible. So I want to thank all the taxpayers and let all the taxpayers know, know that we're good stewards of your money. Good stewards of your money and we'll continue to do that. I want to thank Turner Construction Company. Been a great company to work with and everybody knows they, you know, they, they do a lot all, all over the country. But look what they're doing for us and, and, and our neighborhood. So I want to say thank you all, your dedicated team, and just keep doing what you're doing. That the officers will benefit from a facility like this. When you come to work and you have a facility like this, and you, you leave to start your tour of duty from a facility like that, like this, it means a lot. Start you off with the right frame of mind. You know people care about you. The funding that's been put in this, the thought that's been put in the design of this building. So thank everybody for that. Again, I can't thank you enough. It means a lot to us. Everyone watched construction workers lift the beam and secure it in place. The new North Patrol station will be located near Kansas City International Airport and will be twice the size of the old building 
at 25,000 square feet. It will feature a meeting space, detention area, workout room for employees, and upgraded security. Construction is expected to be completed in the spring of 2017. I'm Sergeant Matt Fisher. Have a safe week. The Shill Creek Living History Museum is located at 7000 Northeast Ferry Road on 80 acres of the 1000 acres that make up Hodge Park. The museum includes 21 structures, several of them were built in the 19th century, and there is programming that happens throughout the year. The grounds are open 365 days a year from dawn to dusk, and we have upcoming programming that is happening here at the museum in the fall that is supported by the Neighborhood Tourist Development Fund. And here to tell us all about the museum and the upcoming programs is Chris Stockton, who is a board member and a reenactor here at the museum. Chris, thank you for having us out here at the museum on such a beautiful day. Nice to have you guys here too. Chris, how long has the museum been open? Since 1975. Since 1975. Yeah. And here at the on the on the grounds, you have buildings that were actually relocated from surrounding counties to give this kind of a village feel. So that's what a lot of people come out to see, correct? That is correct. And tell us about um, the Neighborhood Tourist Development Fund supported events. The first one is the first Saturday in September, correct? That is correct. Um, we actually have a first Saturday program that starts in May. It runs e the first Saturday of every month uh, through September. Mm -hmm. We also have a October Fall Festival uh, that is the second weekend of October. Uh, we also have two other events in October. One is the Kids Safe Halloween, uh, where they can come out and trick or treat and get candy from, from the reenactors. The houses are all opened up, um, or I should say the buildings are all opened up. Um, we also have a adult fright night um, that is, um, that you guys also fund and we open the buildings up and we put reenactors inside and we scare the heck out of pe people. Um, we also have um, the visit with St. Nicholas at the end of the year that is always a fun, fun event for the kids. And a lot of these events have been going on for many years. So you have lots of families that probably come back from, yes, we do. from year to year. <laughs> yes, we do. And can you tell us more about, let's see, the, the first Saturdays. Um, this is the last first Saturday, so you have to get in for the last one. What kind of activities happen on the first Saturday? The first Saturdays, well, this one is going to be uh, special because this one is actually, we are uh, portraying 1876, uh, which actually was an election year, uh, just oh. as, as we're in an election year now. Um, it's a, and they were, they were um, going to vote for a pre president for the year. Um, this is gonna be fun. It's a, we're, a lot of us are gonna be uh, political campaigning and stuff like that. Oh, uh, interesting. So you'll you'll see a lot more of that. Um, but we also will have, uh, there'll be some heated discussions and I'm sure there'll be a little bit of gunfight amongst the uh, the city folk. So you're not just a board member, you're a reenactor. So you reenact history and that's why it's called a Living History Museum. Yes, that is correct. So it's a very, it's a very nice compliment to what kids are learning in schools and the textbooks. So they actually get mm -hmm. to see it live. So you must have a lot of uh, school groups that come through the museum as well. Uh, yes, we do. It's I usually um, every fall from when school starts through before the weather starts getting bad and then once again in the uh, in the springtime we actually have a retired school teacher that uh, does teach school program uh, they we actually have a couple different type of school programs one they actually get to sit in and actually go through a day of school like it would have been back in the 1800s and then we also have one where they actually go from building to building and talk to reenactors um, that tell them about the buildings and tell them what everyday life was like. Well, you have a very active year throughout, so and, and it's all run by volunteers. All of your programs are, are run by volunteers. Yes, that is correct. That's pretty impressive. Yeah, it's, it's un, uh, unlike uh, any other museum. Um, not a single one of us gets any money for being out here. We do this because we enjoy history and we love what we do. Chris, with everything that's happening at the museum, how can people find out about upcoming events, schedules, and ticket prices? We have a couple different avenues. One is our website at shoalcreeklivinghistorymuseum.com. The other is through our Facebook page at Shoal Creek Living History Museum. 
Well, thank you so much for having us out today and for all that you and the volunteers do to educate the public about history and for giving of your time. Well, thank you. The Neighborhood Tourist Development Fund supports local nonprofits that bring cultural, social, educational, and recreational activities to our area. To learn about additional upcoming events, visit kcmo.gov slash ntdf. Have you ever wanted to tell the City Council where to go? Well, now is your chance. The City Council would like you to provide input on its priorities and its five-year business plan. The input will also help shape the next annual budget. Residents are invited to participate in a citizen work session. You'll be able to play a pick your priorities game and take part in a focus group about the objectives in the citywide business plan. Your input will help city leaders decide how your tax dollars are spent to improve delivery of city services. The four sessions are identical, so you only need to attend one. Citizen work sessions start on Tuesday, September 13th from 6 to 8 p.m. at the Office of Northland Neighborhoods Incorporated, which is at 4200 Northeast Shoto Traffic Way. Another session is Thursday, September 22nd from 6 to 8 p.m. at Avila University in the Whitfield Conference Room, and that's at 119th Street and Warnell Road. A third session is Saturday, October 1st, from 9 to 11 a.m. at the Mohart Multipurpose Center at Linwood Boulevard and Wayne Avenue. And the final session will be held on Thursday, October 6th, from 12.30 to 2.30 p.m. at 24th and Troost inside the Kansas City Health Department's Multipurpose Room. In recognition of the Labor Day holiday on September 5th, City Hall and other city offices will be closed. Curbside trash and recycling pickup will also be delayed one day that week. For example, those residents who usually have Monday collection will receive this service on Tuesday, and residents who usually have Friday collection will receive it on Saturday. That does it for this edition of the Weekly Report. You can watch any of our original Channel 2 programs on demand and on your schedule. Just go to the city website, kcmo.gov, and search Channel 2. That page has a link to our YouTube channel, which has a listing of all of our feature stories. And remember, our website is now search-based. Just enter keywords in the search bar rather than hunting for drop-downs. To stay in touch with us on social media, like us on Facebook at the City of Kansas City Mo Government and follow us on Twitter at KCMO. Thanks for watching. I'm Chris Hernandez. Have a great week.